Afternoon guys, Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what we're going to do today is we're going to do part three in our ladder building series of videos as far as building ladders with rope. And building anything with rope that's structural is a key element to being good at bushcraft and being a good woodsman. Understanding elements of cordage and how to utilize them is very, very important in a lot of things that you're going to do while you're in the woods. Building a ladder is just one of them. It will allow you to reach things that you could not reach or possibly get down from places you could not get down from otherwise safely. So the first video that we did, we talked about building a marline spike hitch ladder. And that's just the rope is the structural part of your ladder with marline spike hitches in it with wooden rungs across it. And that ladder works best for being dropped off of something and climbing down, although it could be pulled up into something if you had a rope that you could toss over a limb or something like that and you could pull it up to it after you built it on the ground. The second ladder that we talked about was true ladder lashings on poles and you can still recover your cordage with that type of ladder. It's a very good ladder to build in that you don't have to chase the end of your cordage all the time to make the knots and I really like that part of building a properly lashed ladder. But there is also a way that you can build a ladder that's fairly quick and easy, but you will have to chase the end of your ropes, and that's with simple half hitches. And I'm going to show you that ladder right now. Okay, so let's talk about the half hitch method of making a rope ladder. And like I said, the only thing that's a pain about this really is that you always have to pull the whole line through each one of your knots that you're making, where you don't have to do that with the ladder lash method. The advantage probably to this one is if you had two people working on this at one time, one guy could be cutting your rungs while the other guy's tying the ladder. That's an advantage. But all you're going to do is you're going to come around here and remember about the going up the rope part. All you're going to do is come in here and tie a half hitch around here at every space that you want to put a rung. Just like this. And again, you've got to pull all this cordage through every time. If you bundle up your cordage a little bit, you can make it a little bit faster on yourself. But what you get when you do this is you get something that looks like this that's pulling down and you put your rung inside here. So you would just measure those down as you go. Remember, sticks are not going to be your friend. Get any sticks that are in the way out of the way if you can before you do this or they're going to be caught in your cordage. Now, come down to the next one and again remember that you always have to climb the cordage so you're always going up through pull it through if you're using a hundred foot of cordage this can be a little bit of a pain but again you can adjust these really easy just make sure everything stays good and tight all the way down you want this as tight as you can get it you don't want too much slack in here this mule tape does have a little bit of stretch to it, a little bit of elasticity it seems like, even after you get it good and tight, which is a good thing for something like this. And once we get this where we want it, or this side where we want it, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side, on this other pole. Once we get down here as far as we want to go on this pole, and I'll probably go maybe two more rungs, one down about right here, and maybe one more. Then I'm going to go over to the other side, and get things evened up and you can see you know again this is the this is the pain to me of this type of ladder is that you have all this cordage that wants to get knotted up every time you're pulling it through sticks again not your friend always going to be in your rope just a lesson to learn all right again the good thing easy to adjust this exactly where you want it after you get everything pulled through just make sure you've got that right on the front side you 
should have all of these pretty well lined up down the pole. We'll put one more down here, about right here. We'll call it good. Then we'll go over and do the other side. Now when we get down to the bottom of this thing, we're going to do the same thing that we talked about. And we're just going to put a clove hitch in here. Okay, so once we've got our lashings down our pole as far as our half hitches all the way down, that's called a marling hitch or a marling line. Once we get that on the pole, now we can actually put our poles up in the tree and we can build the ladder on the way up if we want to. I'll show you how that works. So I just took the tag ends and put them where my bottom rung goes. And at this point now all we have to do is put our rungs in our half hitches just like this. And I've got these things cut in progressive lengths, getting shorter and shorter because the ladder's a V at the top. So I just put those in. I can probably reach at least the first three. And this is going to get tighter as you go because you're pulling everything down and taut. So that's a good thing. You may end up to the point where you've got to do some work to get these in. Again, if you do, that's okay too. The tighter this thing is, the better off you are. All right, so there's our first three rungs in. Now to get our next rung in, you can see this is twisted around a little bit right here. That won't be a big deal. We'll only twist it here in a minute. So to get our next rung in, we basically have to climb now. Now we can come up here get our next rung in. Again, this is going to tighten up on you. And there's a lot of things you can do to relieve that a little bit. This one here slipped around to the back on me a little bit. I don't like that. I would probably pull that out of the tree and slide that around. Or just go up to the next rung if I really don't need a rung right there. Those rungs are pretty close together right there. I could just go up to the next one and not worry about it too much. Come up here. Put one in here instead. And as I get up here, this thing's going to be leaning on the tree. So it's going to be harder and harder to get these in as well because of that. So just keep sliding them in and working them down. Just like that. And then we can just keep climbing this ladder until we get up to where we need to get to. This ladder's plenty stable, it's not going anywhere. This stuff's made out of three and a half inch maple, and it's not going to go anywhere. Well, I went ahead and fought that rung in there because I couldn't stand not having it in there. So I went ahead and fought it in there anyway. But anyway, as you can see, you know, we can get as high up in this tree as we need to get now as long as our ladder is. And it's plenty stable, not going anywhere. Well, guys, I appreciate you joining me today for this uh, video on rope ladders, the second and third parts of our series. I won't know until I get back and start editing footage whether this will be a single part or a two part video for these type of ladders. They're both based really on half hitches. One's a little easier to construct than the other. They both have advantages and disadvantages. I think Morse Kahansky teaches a very similar ladder to this one at his school as well. And like I said, the only disadvantage I see with a ladder like this is unless your cordage is hanked up or bundled up, you're going to be chasing the end of that cord all the time to wrap this marline loop or this marling set of marling loops 
down each side of this pole. Whereas with a normal ladder lash taught in the Boy Scouts of America, everything is on loops and bends. So it's a little bit easier to construct. I think that this, once it's in the tree, once you have everything in place, because everything's under tension and pressure, this is probably a very stable ladder. The two things that are important to understand here is number one, this is a single length of cordage. Nothing had to be cut to make this ladder. All of this cordage is very easily recoverable because there's no permanent knots. You have self-tightening knots in that you have opposing clove hitches at the top. You have clove hitches sealing it off at the bottom. And then you have a series of marling hitches down the side, which basically amount to half hitches down a pole. So all of those things come undone very easily, which means you are not expending a resource that you can't recover for later use. I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.